small ship cruising, let's talk about the differences between small ship cruising and ocean cruising. First things first, it's hundreds versus thousands. This is a real picture. This isn't some uh, photoshopped experience here. This is definitely one of those ocean liners next to what we would term a small ship. And you're talking about from 20 or so people all the way up to 400 is what we would deem as a small ship. And there's more crew to take care of you. Embarkation and disembarkation is so much easier uh, on a small ship experience. That's why you should consider a small ship as your option uh, to take. Uh, in addition to that, it's not about cruising. It's about an adventure. And if you're thinking of yachting or sailing as your experience, something a lot more intimate where you can get to know your crew, your guides, and your fellow passengers, this is definitely an experience for you. You can also experience new destinations, Antarctica, Thailand. If these are places that you've thought about traveling before but didn't know how to get there or what supplier partner, what cruise line you should take or how you should get there, you need to listen to a couple of the partners that I'll talk about more. In addition to new destinations, how about new experiences, the same destination, but see it differently. This is Alaska, and this is an uncruise. And yes, this is a real photo, not Photoshop. So you know, small ships get you to places that the big ones simply cannot. How about that waterfall? You can't miss out on that. It's also about flexible itineraries. And what these do, they allow you to follow the wildlife wherever it may go. Instead of the map and the captain saying, we have to get to the next destination, we have to get to Juneau tomorrow, we can't leave today, or we can't go off the beaten path to find that wildlife that you're looking for, that bear or that penguin if you're in Antarctica, you can in a small ship experience. In addition to flexible itineraries, you're looking at on-ship experiences that are filled with intimate moments like this. While the food options, the number of options may be less, you are going to have tremendous food and culinary experiences in a small ship environment. Many of those in al fresco dining, like this couple right here, in tropical weather, it's fantastic. In cold weather, maybe not so much, uh, but you will definitely have some cold weather experiences. Also on ship, you're looking for something a little bit more getaway. Uh, yes, there is Wi-Fi, but you shouldn't be there for the Wi-Fi. You should be there for other amenities. No, there's, there's not gymnasiums. There's not workout facilities. There's not casinos. There's not show lounges. This is your experience on ship. And we'll talk about the exact partner of ours that sails just like this. Uh, when we continue on in the presentation. Off ship is where you want to be. Ship is really a tool to get you to a place in order for you to immerse yourself in the destination, the culture, the cuisine. And this is none other than Paul Gauguin. And we'll talk about Paul Gauguin in Tahiti. Just right off the back of the ship, take your kayak and off you go. And I, I'm not sure if this is Marea or uh, Bora Bora, either one, you can't go wrong. This looks like Morea to me. I have been on the Paul Gauguin, but it doesn't get much better than this. Or does it? If you're looking for an off ship adventure, like a polar plunge, it's very easy to do and fun to do on your small ship experience. Or if you just want to scuba dive or snorkel in a private island experience, you have those opportunities with many of our suppliers that are super easy right off the back of the vessel. Not with thousands of people trying to get to an excursion where you're paying extra dollars to rent scuba gear, to get snorkeling gear. This is in most cases included in all of your small ship experiences. Oh, but it's also, we talked about wildlife. How about this off ship experience in Antarctica? You do get to get off the ship and have a landing. And there's not, uh, when you say you're gonna go to Antarctica, that doesn't mean Everybody that goes gets to just get off ship like you're at any port and off you go and there's your food vendor and your t-shirt vendor and a hotel right there. Uh -uh, there's no humans that are living obviously in Antarctica or really working there. Uh, they control the number of landings, control the number of people that set foot on this, this really sacred continent. And it's really reserved for small ships to be able to have this type of an experience uh, and again, that is not photoshopped. Uh, that picture is real where those 
cruise passengers are right up next to the penguins. Uh, let's dive in a little bit to some of our supplier partners. These are some of our favorites. I'm going to go through some of these here to give you a little bit of a feel for the differences between the small ship experiences. And there's a number of, of differences for you to, to understand. This is Herta Gruten. Uh, it is uh, Norwegian based. Uh, they started way back in 1893 and their hallmark uh, is all about the Norwegian coast. It's really true expedition vessels sailing to the Arctic and the Antarctica. Uh, many destinations in between as well, but this is what they do best. They're specially designed ships that are uh, state-of-the-art expedition polar ice-breaking vessels. They're brand new and they're environmentally sustainable as well. Uh, hydro propulsion ships custom built just for Herta Gruten. They take you to these remote destinations. They unlock the world's greatest expeditionary itineraries from the Arctic to Alaska, to the Northern parts of Europe. And they do get down to South America as well, but their authentic excursions set them apart. You can delve deeper, get closer, explore further through a wide range of adventures from glacier hikes to sea kayaking to wildlife encounters. Many are designed for the more active Yes, uh, but please note, you don't have to be a triathlete to be able to go on Hurtigruten. Uh, if you can climb a flight of stairs, you can go on Hurtigruten. That is essentially what they would tell you. Uh, but if you're looking for a super active adventure, this could be a supplier that you'd be interested in traveling with. Lynn Blad. Lynn Blad has been traveling for many, many years, and they are all about exploration and adventure by land and sea. And one of their specialties is their partnership with National Geographic. You can travel alongside National Geographic explorers, photographers, writers, naturalists, scientists, and other experts in very diverse fields. And this allows you to get unmatched professional insight, inspiration, and instruction pretty much on every journey. These explorations to the planet's most remarkable places allow you to unlock uh, some unbelievable knowledge uh, where these scientists have traveled, where they've been, but Lindblad offers kind of an all five senses engagement. It's exhilarating, it's authentic, uh, and it takes you to some of the most remote places in the world. But also note, it's for travelers of all ages. If you're thinking about traveling with your kids or your grandkids and you want to expose them to something special and unique. Think of Lindblad. Their excursions and experiences are for travelers of any age, interest, or activity level. Uh, their small ships are really ideal for families. They're ideal for thrill seekers, but they're also ideal for seniors and solo travelers as well. You can have that unique intimate engagement with these scientists and naturalists and National Geographic experts that other cruise lines have experts, these have National Geographic experts. So it's something special and unique. We talked a lot about cold. Come on, let's get out of cold. Who wants that all the time, every time? Well, maybe in the summer of Tucson's heat you do, but not much better than the Paul Gauguin ship in Tahiti, which is specially designed to sail through the shallow seas of the South Pacific. It's really a small ship cruiser's dream. Less than 300 passengers have access to intimate, idyllic ports in paradise, all while enjoying a casual onboard experience that's really nothing short of luxurious. I sailed on Paul Gauguin about five years ago and can attest to the fact that because they are owned and operated in the South Pacific, they know it better than anyone else. Uh, it's year-round excursions and, and itineraries. Uh, I took a Papiete, Papiete a round trip experience that had stops in Bora Bora, uh, in, in Morea, also to their private island of Motu Mahana. And that was where uh, you had the picture earlier of those snorkelers just off on those white sandy beaches. There was a floating bar. There were people taking in over the water massages. There's water sports aplenty. And of course, the Polynesian hospitality is unlike any other with that evening barbecue feast that you can envision with the drums beating right now. But this is really a fun in the sun and sea. So take that dip in the pool, take that dip in the ocean. Uh, Paul Gauguin again offers those iconic waters of French Polynesia in the South Pacific and a world of wonders above the sea and below if you're interested. 
back up to the northern or extreme southern part of the globe. This is Quark Expeditions. And Quark Expeditions uh, is one of, our, one of our favorite partners. They are a modern fleet of small expedition ships. They have authentic icebreakers that, that carry less than 200 passengers, but each one of them are equipped with Zodiacs that allow passengers to reach the world's really most remote, unspoiled and breathtaking places with comfort and ease. Uh, they're the polar experts is what they would tell you at the Antarctica and Arctic region, which is unspoiled, unpredictable. These polar adventures uh, offer you really a bucket list of journeys through a spectacular wilderness where nature creates the rules. And that's where every trip, this is the flexible itinerary concept that we brought up to follow a family of polar bears or to make sure that you're in the right place in Antarctica to follow those penguins. You can explore these alongside true expedition guides, all of whom are veterans, they're skilled outdoors men and outdoors women. Uh, they're well-trained experts with rich, rich backgrounds in marine biology, in history, geology, glaciology, uh, and much, much more. Uh, they have 186 expert guides worldwide that will be descending upon the ship. So Quark Expeditions would be what they would call your polar experts. Another partner of ours is Sea Dream. We're back a little bit more to the warm weather experience, but Sea Dream would tell you it's yachting, not cruising. They're really about the difference between that traditional buffet on the cruise. I, like I mentioned, the casino, uh, the show lounge, uh, 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 not on a Sea Dream experience. A maximum of 112 guests. They've got 95 award-winning crew. So that's almost a one-to-one -one crew ratio. And I talked about smaller numbers of passengers. Why is that important? better service when you need something, better service when you want something. And if there happened to be an emergency on the high seas, wouldn't you want more people there to take care of your needs? I sure would. And that crew is dedicated to make sure that every detail is addressed. Sailing aboard one of the two vessels that Sea Dream puts in the water really ensures the highest level of luxury, adventure, and pampering. It's a true boutique yachting experience. And they're all about that five-star service that's Second to none, uh, they're about personalized encounters and incomparable style, experts in attention to detail. Uh, their itineraries are really intimate ports, hidden harbors, yachting playgrounds. And again, all of these smaller ships, and, and in particular here, Sea Dream takes you to where those larger ships just simply cannot. They afford those overnight stays in exotic locales that you can enjoy the nightlife, which a lot of times cruising does not allow you to do when you have to get the all call to the ship at four o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock in the afternoon. How many of us have been there? And you're like, ah, oh, the city's coming to life or this, this port is coming to life. I wanna be there uh, after the sun goes down. The two ships that Sea Dream puts in the water have the, the off the bow, uh, off the stern, I mean, opportunity for the water sports, as you can see, it's not just kayaking, scuba, snorkeling, windsurfing, lots of different opportunities. If you're someone who enjoys uh, the water sports, this is very easy for you to access. It's not difficult for you to, to get to the Sea Dream water platform. Next is Silver Sea Expeditions. If you want to discover the world's most exciting destinations while traveling in extraordinary true luxury, all-inclusive style, it would be aboard one of the Silver Sea Expedition ships. All of the accommodations on Silver Sea are spacious, ocean view suites that include a butler. Even in the small ships, you can have that butler experience. Many of them also include a private veranda, which is very nice to have, uh, to be able to enjoy it directly from your stateroom, all that's out in front of you. But like we talked, there's no salient price tags in all-inclusive Silver Sea experience. So at the end of your journey, you're not going to get that bill underneath your door. It's included in every cruise fare the following, free-flowing premium wines and spirits, delicious gourmet cuisine, in-room dining, full butler service, and all of your gratuities. And that butler service really starts at the pier, starts at embarkation. They'll escort you to your suite. They'll unpack your bags. They'll press your clothes if you need them pressed. Uh, 
uh, and all of our uh, the suites on Silver Sea are, have that dedicated butler and, and to use this word to pamper you with personalized attention and take care of all of those details. They go to some pretty incredible destinations. Uh, they sail directly into the heart of St. Petersburg, around the tip of Cape Town, along the oil-rich sheikdoms in the Middle East, throughout the breathtaking Chilean fjords, and down through the Galapagos Islands, which is where this photo has taken place, or again, the icy wilderness of Antarctica. There's a number of vessels that Silver Sea sails with, Four of them, the cloud, uh, sorry, five of them, cloud, shadow, spirit, whisper, and wind are all less than 400 passengers. If you want to go on more of the true expedition experience, that's going to be the Discoverer, Explorer, and the Silver Sea Galapagos. That's more of an expedition vessel. But I point out those differences because the first set of Silver Sea ships provides that six-star level of service and the bed linens and quality uh, it's really a luxury cruise experience that has an expedition component to it. If you want to know more about that and which ship to take, which fits your needs, our travel advisors are standing by right now to talk about that. Or you can click on the link at the end of our presentation in the chat button that will take you to a one-on-one -on -one experience with our advisors. We'll continue talking about another opportunity. You want to talk about completely different from everything we've shown you thus far. Star Clippers is uh, our next partner. This picture is taken in Thailand. If you've ever thought of, gosh, I want to do something different than just the Med or just the Baltic or just the Caribbean and Alaska. If you ever thought about something as exotic as Thailand with a full rigged sailing ship. And this is really the golden age of sailing, taking you back from the ninth to the 19th century. It's going to really transport you back in time can uh, explore unspoiled islands, exotic landscapes, and timeless ports. But this ship is not just a sailing vessel, it's modern comfort creature features, and it's on a mega yacht. It's really a throwback to the kind of the grand age of travel along the high seas, but these are state-of-the-art ships. They offer the ultimate ocean experience, balancing kind of that grandeur and adventure of a sailing experience with superb service and comfort of a modern yacht experience. It's informal, as you would expect. It's not your traditional cruise in the classic sense, but you do what you want from day to night. You eat when you want, you eat with who you want. There's really little to no rules or schedules for you to follow. It's just flat out relaxation. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there's some culinary delights on Star Clippers. They have inspired chefs with every meal that uh, create a delightful culinary adventure. It's uh, from far corners of the earth to just traditional casual fare uh, with festive barbecues ashore, a la carte menus that change daily. Uh, this is an experience that is unlike any other small ship that I have shown you prior to this. Star Clippers is definitely a unique one that when you're having dinner with your friends, when you come back and you tell them about this experience, they're going to want to know more, I promise you. Uncruise is one of our favorites as well. Uncruise, as I mentioned earlier, is flagged in the United States. What does that mean? It means they are sailing in Alaska with sh six ships this year. This summer, they don't have to wait till July. They don't have to wait for the CDC's conditional sale order to get approval for all the ocean liners. Uncruise can go now. It's a small ship experience. That's one of the reasons. But most importantly, it's flagged in the United States. So you can have a Juno to Juno round trip experience to ports that you will never hear from the major ships. And why? There's less than 86 passengers on all of their vessels. And it takes you to enriching and authentic places uh, typically in Alaska would be one of our best experiences. You know, pack with a go with the flow attitude because the itineraries are flexible in nature, like we mentioned. Uh, these in the moment detours are just based on the movement of wildlife settings, maybe the weather changes or natural wonders. That makes UnCruise more spontaneous than really any other cruise line, even that I've shared. It's a family adventure as well. Think summer camp for the entire family. That polar bear plunge that I picture I showed you earlier, that was off of an uncruised ship. The paddleboard experience that you're looking for, uh, it's a storytelling adventure uh, if you're on board an uncruised itinerary. And the word uncruised might sound different and unique to you, 
they chose that title because it's a cruise, but it's not a cruise. That's really what they're looking for. These are itineraries that take you to bucket list destinations. I mentioned Alaska because it's so ever present and it's so special because you can go there now, but there's a number of other wilderness experiences uh, and, and itineraries that you can experience on the Colombian Snake Rivers in the United States, Costa Rica, Panama, the Galapagos, Hawaii, the Sea of Cortez in Mexico, and more experiences along the Pacific Northwest. Uncruise is definitely a small ship. If you're interested in that adventure uh, of a lifetime, you should definitely check out. Got one more partner to share with you, and that's Windstar another private yacht experience. They have six vessels in their fleet. Three of them are sailing yachts. And that's what you see here in this picture. Three of them are powered yachts, no sails, they're motorized, but the experience takes you to legendary places, stunning smaller ports that again, those large ships can't get into. It's about 300 guests and they're all like-minded with that authentic gate, uh, looking for an engaging experience. It's a country club feel on the ship. It does have an elevated cuisine and elegant service feel on board, but uh, it's still taking you to some of those destinations that are remote and doing it in a luxurious experience. Uh, they're boutique yachts that visit those hidden harbors, iconic islands, uh, that others can't reach. I've sailed on Windstar in the Mediterranean on what you would think is a pretty traditional itinerary. I, I sailed from Nice down to Rome and that would sound pretty normal, but we went to a couple of ports of call in France that the big ships just don't sail to. When we stepped off ship uh, in one of the small French ports, no one was there to greet us. There weren't the curio shops, there wasn't uh, the little tent set up with food and t-shirts and all of that. They didn't care we were there because we were the only ship and the only ship that had been there in a week. So it's not built this port of call for passengers to get off. And that was an experience my wife and I were looking for. We were able to get lost in the town, had a great lunch before we got back on ship. Uh, it was truly that once in a lifetime adventure that we stumbled upon because we were on Windstar. Uh, but they're, they really take the chefs and are searching for fresh local cuisine. The chefs get off ship. I actually had this experience as well when we were in Italy. We were able to get off ship, go to one of the markets with the chef, pick out some of the seafood with him that he was going to prepare for us in the dining room later on that evening. That was a special experience that because of the small ship environment, I didn't have to pay for this shore excursion. It wasn't, you know, oh, go to bus number 15 or bus number 22 and we're gonna send you over here. I was really wander off the ship side by side with the chef uh, to be able to understand what he was looking for and for the fresh local cuisine. And it was mm, fantastic food aboard the Windstar vessel. The small ship cruising experience, in a nutshell, it's hundreds versus thousands. Think about getting on and off your ship. Think about having more crew to help you. Those are experiences you want to have with a small ship. It's also about an adventure, not a cruise. It's like a yacht your own personal yacht and maybe even a sailing yacht at that you're thinking about star clippers it's a about new destinations it's about old destinations in a new way it's about flexible itineraries taking you to places that maybe the itinerary didn't call for but that's where the wildlife was and the captain knew that's what you wanted to experience and maybe most importantly the ship that is a small ship is a tool to get you to a place in order for you to immerse yourself in the destination, the culture, the cuisine, and everything that is off ship. And you're doing it with a small, intimate group of people. And in almost all the cases that I shared with you before, it is with a guide, an expert, somebody that has been there, done that. So thank you for joining me on our presentation.